my teacher at Columbine High School. There was a student here with a gun. He had shot out a window. I believe one library. And I've got every student in this library on the phone without a sound the Is there any way you can lock the door well? Yeah, there's one. This room is filled with smoke. Okay. Okay. Keep everyone low to the floor. Well, I saw you all like the last video, so I thought I'd do this again. Who is Reb? Well, Reb is the nickname of Eric Harris, who we all know was one of the vile poopy heads who killed 13 people and wounded almost two dozen others at Columbine High School. And since this tragic anniversary of 25 years is coming up, I thought we should look at the warning signs and the possible tapes left behind and some of the transcripts they left behind of the tapes because some of them were destroyed by Jefferson County. Alright guys, um, sorry that this is blurry but you know how Android is with screenshots, but I will basically paraphrase, paraphrase all these things for you and what the transcripts say because not much of these other tapes have been released. Hitman for Hire, I believe that's the entire tape. That's I do believe that's the one that's been released in its whole entirety, but anyway, let's get into it. I know you can't see it, but I'm telling the truth. Transcript of the Columbine basement <laughs> basement tapes, and this is literal, literally like a month and five days before their, like literally five weeks before their attack, because they their attack occurred on April 20th, so this is just over a month before that, and... They're, they were just talking about their hurt feel, hurt feelings. Like Eric said that he was always the new kids in new kid in school because his father had to move so often, like five times when he was little. So he was constantly the new kid in school. So that kind of made him have some resentment. But they also made out that they loved their parents dearly and that they would be torn up by this and that they would go back on memories and say, oh, that was a sign. And they knew that what they were doing would have an impact on the world and how the people, that's why they did it. Dylan had an older brother called Byron Klebold, and he always despised him because he, Dylan felt like the, quote, runt of the litter. And he did not like the way people treated him like that. Because he was less athletic, more picked on, more lonely than his brother. You know, just everything opposite of his brother Byron. But Byron, I believe, was kicked out of the house because he was doing some bad stuff. But, you know, whatever. But that's why Dylan was mad. And they all acted, you know, blame the world, you know. They said that their parents added on to the rage. And they actually, state, Dylan stated that... One time, he was actually trying on his trench coat to see if it would see, you know, conceal his sawed-off shotgun. And his mother caught him with the trench coat on, but she didn't see the shotgun. So, or she did, but she just didn't know what it was. And I think Dylan just convinced her it was an airsoft gun. But, yeah, and she walked away, but his mother actually walked in on him with his guns and his trench coat trying to look fancy for his shooting he just wanted to look cool for the cameras because they knew what they were doing they knew that the images of the cctv would be everywhere and at one point in the tapes they talk about a girl called rachel now this is where it kind of gets interesting the one of the victims in the shooting's names was was rachel scott and her family actually went in years later to listen to the tapes and watch them they took in a recorder and recorded them saying, like, fuck that bitch Rachel or whatever. And they thought, but I don't know if it was her or not. I don't know if that was confirmed. I mean, they're both, they're all three of them are dead, so I I don't know. But it very well could have been, but it's, it's a big high school. 
I heard, so it's probably multiple kids named Rachel, so I doubt it. But it's a good possibility, and it stirred up. And, of course, this she said yes by with Cassie Bernal, one of the other victims. You know, it's just sad that people are trying to make propaganda off of dead teenagers. You know, it sucks. But, yeah, let's go over some other weird stuff today. And here, I'm not going to show this on screen because the screenshots always mess up. But Reb's tape, or Eric Harris's tape, better known as Reb. That's his little nickname, I guess, his little moniker, I guess. But he would make a tape that they, were, they would state that they were planning this for basically a year, I think. And they said at least eight months at that point. So this has been going on in their heads for a while. So that means around the time they got arrested. Yeah, and if I didn't mention, Dylan Klebold and Eric Harris were arrested in 1998 for robbing a van of, like, computer shit and stuff like that. But they would eventually plead guilty in a, you know, they wouldn't have to be in jail or anything, but... They would, you know, get a diversion program, which usually, even now, that's how the things usually work first time for a minor, kind of a medium minor offense. It's kind of how things work out. But I don't know if that's around the time, because April, April 20th, 19th, this was in, like, April, like, March or April. So this was around the time they got arrested that they were planning a massacre in 1998. And they'd, they've been, been depressed and writing in their journals since like 1996 or 7. Like, and it's crazy. Like, Dylan writes some, the first thing that he wrote in his journal was that he was considering suicide. Like, I've seen that. But I am just flabbergasted that the, the people would report these kids too. Like, they would report them. And they were reported to the school multiple times and nothing was done. Even by a classmate who said they, they were posting threats online. Dude, if you did that today, even in a small town or whatever, in a place where this doesn't happen, you know, you'd, you'd get a stern talking to at the least. But they didn't even get that. They just kind of walked. So there was warning signs. And Sue Klebold did a few TED Talks. And yeah. And eventually, Eric and Dylan addressed their parents, like I said earlier. They acted like they loved them. And Eric would say that they were the best parents he ever had. Well, I mean, the best parents he knew. But, you know, there was his, they were his parents. But he loved them dearly. And he told people not to harass anybody. And that they wouldn't deserve it. And don't give anyone shit. Don't arrest their friends for hanging out with them. Don't do anything like that. So at least at least they show the due diligence, huh?